Hello heroes, 3D Hero here, and today we'll be covering the one and only Art of Inmost Light with Arc 3.0. It has been a long time coming since I've been messing around with all three of the subclasses and just seeing how exactly good they all are, and each and every one of them have their pros and cons, which I can't wait to show. So today's session I'm going to show you an endgame Art of Inmost Light build via Arc, and this setup will allow you to cover all areas of combat, utilize any weapon of choice, and have a faster regen rate that will get stronger and stronger the longer the more you use your abilities. No matter the stats or weapons you use, if you have hard or inmost light, then this setup shown will carry you as long as you like it to be. But you know what else is hard hitting and ready for in game content? This channel right here. So if you enjoy the content, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future, as it would really help. So to start, we will be using Thunder Crash as it's the best in terms of sheer damage on a single target or multiple in one area. Utilizing your abilities, you will need to be flexible here so you can increase regen speed and how hard your abilities can hit one after another. You can change up your class ability and your grenades depending on the instance you're in, but if you play it smart and safe, then you won't need to change your class ability to barricades, nor you need to change your grenades to anything but storm grenades. So why not take a look at what we'll be using in the showcase? The touch of thunder aspect allows users to enhance one out of the four grenades you have available. The one we'll be using allows our storm grenade to track for longer. We then have knockout where quickly wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regenerating your health. For fragments we have spark of recharge where being quickly wounded, your melee and grenades regen much faster. Spark of ions where defeating a jolted target creates ion traces. Spark of Shock where your Arc Grenades jolt targets and Spark of Magnitude where your grenade duration is extended. For stats we have 90 Resilience, 100 in Discipline and 20 to 40 in Strength. For key mods you need to have Wall of Irons where collecting an Elemental Well will grant you a plus 30% mini buff for 10 seconds, Battle for Well for plus 2 wells created, Elemental Ordnance for creating wells via grenades, Radio Light for a plus 20 in Strength and additional add-ons, Lightning strikes twice for increased grenade regen upon its use, and bad amplitude for causing champions to be jolted by arc abilities. Now do ignore the 20 in strength stat as this section can be increased or decreased depending on the activity being played and whether you need to change your heavy weapon for another scavenger mod. This setup is fantastic with allowing you to place pressure onto a target and get non-stop ability energy back just from using what you got. Your grenades will be tracking and causing additional damage to anyone caught near it, and champions are pretty much deleted once in action. Your melee will be doing more damage than normal, and using the thunderclap ability can one-shot many combatants if buffed and connected. And then your class ability Thruster moveset allows you to stay mobile and is very easy to proc, so you can utilize this to the highest degree. I truly believe this build will be seen in GM as an alternative to using Void or Solo instead, when you need to do damage fast and can't stay in one area for too long. Although this is the conclusion I came to after playing around for a good while in Master Tier content. Now weapons we have the following which is always down to you to decide. For primary we have the Smite of Moen with Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, a great combo to have on any weapon and great for users who use their grenades a lot. Although it will be better suited to use a fusion rifle or a shotgun in the primary section, it won't matter too much if you're playing endgame content, as much endgame activities will require you to use an anti-champion mod with corresponding weapon. I would say though, if you haven't done the raid then this will be a great time to do so, as the weapon is A tier in terms of how it feels and is pretty strong against major to minors. You also have the Rune of Over Origin trait that can allow you to overflow your weapon magazine for more ammo over time. Endgame wise, this is very handy for continuous DPS when you don't have the time to reload or swap, but once again, unless you're playing endgame content, then a simple fusion rifle will be fine to use and cover. For secondary, we have the Sweet Sorrow AR with Triple Tap and Demolitionist, and you want to either farm or craft a version of this weapon for this season as it truly is an amazing weapon to use. It has everything an AR lover would want, good steady damage, big magazine, great reload speed, and very reliable no matter where you are. As I have mentioned earlier, if you're playing endgame and don't need a pulse rifle in your weapon slot, then I would advise you to use a fusion rifle or linear fusion such as Arbalist, as the weapon itself and per combination is enough to keep the build going. If not, then the following setup is great for the run of the mill content, as the AR can act as a miniature SMG while you need to reload your primary or heavy. 
but honestly, don't sleep on this weapon, folks. For heavy, we have the Thunderlord, which can now stun overload champions. And let me just say that it's a monster on the white environment and can do a lot of damage in a short time frame. I would say now is a great time to start using heavy machine guns in general, since they have been buffed and there's a scavenger mod available for only one armor slot for them. This means that you can add on an additional mod that is more heavy on the cost, but don't require you to sacrifice anything else. Alternatively, the Storm Chaser Linear Fusion is another great weapon to use as its arc as well and hits hard when landing your triple burst hits. For stats, we have already mentioned both Discipline and Resilience are the two only stats you need to focus on. But unlike last time, we will be using our strength at great lengths to keep the flow of the build going. I would say if you follow what is shown as best you can and time your abilities correctly, you won't need to worry about having a high stat just to achieve what is being shown on screen. And I honestly mean that. So covering the most important stat we have, Discipline being at 100 allows us to spam our grenades one after another and getting our tracers plus elemental wells plus demolitionists will be enough for us to achieve our goals. Thanks to the touch of thunder aspect and how it affects storm grenades, we can use this to light up an area in a single hit or two and anyone stronger than that will be hit multiple times by the grenade until it dissipates. This makes the build incredibly strong for endgame as it will do its own thing and clear up ads while you're focusing on something else. But not only that, but the build also allows us to utilize grenade a lot more thanks to the hard in this light effect and the grenade cooldown duration. Simply, having what I just mentioned is more than enough to allow this build to flourish in any activity you wish and you don't need to add more mods to make it even better. Resilience now is at 90, although it can be pushed to 100, but this isn't necessary. We will be using Crush to increase our mobility while also using it to reduce our cooldown rate of our other abilities as well. You can use your barricade if you wish and you don't need to worry about it potentially being useful for just lower end content as it's quite fantastic at helping you get out of danger. Also, thanks to its fast cooldown rate, you could rely on just this and your grenades to achieve what you need best and you could in practice take off demo based weapons and use whatever you like and still have a great cooldown nonetheless. The strength now could be at 20 to 40 ranges, and this will be supported by your resilience and your discipline stat, as you can play continuously. Do not worry about needing a weapon perk or mod to help with boosting the following stat further, as it's not needed. As you'll see, we can get a full grenade back as long as we collect wells and use our abilities as accordingly, and this is more than enough to keep you and your skill afloat. This also means that Radiant Light users don't need to have this on their armor unless you intend to play it safe and secure. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching subclass and weapon type, Hands On for getting bonus super energy on midi kill, Absolution for reduced ability regen time as you pick up an orb of power, and Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger Mod for more ammo reserves. Now, as we have covered the main topics of the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Discipline, Hands On, Homolux Siphon, and Well of Irons mod. Arms, we have Discipline, and Battle for Well mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Thermal Shot Plating, because of Damna and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger mod, Absolution, and Radiant Light mod. Mark, we have Minor Recovery, Bad Amplitude, and Lightning Strike Twice mod. Just like we are used to, this fantastic build will allow users to make full use of their abilities one after another and self-sustain themselves in the most hardest content out there. No need to be skilled or need to have a certain weapon to make the build work, as it's designed to fit any user and any use of weaponry of your choice. Keep in mind, Elemental Worlds and Demolitious Perk can also be removed from the setup and still work a treat if you put the effort in still. And this is all thanks to Hard in most light, one of the strongest and most reliable Titan exotics out there. This one exotic has allowed Titans to do any content as they like, without needing to heavily rely on mods or certain features just to stay alive as long as possible. Although, I would recommend the Void version of the build as it's more safer for newer players and does allow you to actively debug button as you please. The Arc variant allows users to play aggressive and move faster and simply stay on your toes, a opposite to what Solar and Void offer. This is why I can see this setup being useful for GM Lightblade, as the boss encounter requires you to stay on the go and hit hard and fast. Solar and Void can still be used once as content, but Lightblade, Master Kept Crash, King's Full Raid, etc. All of these require a certain setup and playstyle to really survive the most difficult aspect of the game, 
And from testing these out, they really do need to stay on the move and hit hard as quickly as possible. I enjoy the build, and to be frank, Solar and Void are also great to use with hard image lights. The following setup allows you to use Arc 3.0 to its fullest and shows you what it's capable of in the most rigorous content. If you've been looking for a reason to use the exotic with Arc 3.0, then I would hope this build has explained fully the pros and cons to it. And I also hope you enjoy it. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig the type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.